Good day, everyone. My name is Mama Suleiman Abakar MSK. Today, we're going to discuss Felix. Topic, motion. Motion can be defined as changing the position of a body relative with time. When defining motion, two most important parameters are position with respect to time. So there are parameters that we need to explain their meaning every single time we are explaining motion. These parameters include one, distance. Two, displacement. Three, speed. Four, velocity. Five, uniform speed. Six, uniform velocity. Seven, acceleration. Eight, retardation. To mention some few. Distance has to do with or less than nine time. Very, very important for right from the definition of motion. This distance has to do with the measure of separation between two points. Distance is a scalar quantity. It has only magnitude without direction. But displacement is equally a distance measured but in a specified direction. Both distance and displacement have some units. The unit of distance is meter. That is the SI unit. Likewise, displacement. But displacement is a vector quantity, while distance is a scalar quantity. Speed. Speed is the ratio of distance over time. So speed is a scalar quantity, while velocity is a ratio of displacement over time. To the further displacement is a vector quantity, then velocity is also a vector quantity. Uniform speed. Since we've defined speed as the rate of change of distance with time. So if at all, a car or a body travel equal distance in equal time, no matter how small the time may be, then the speed is said to either be uniform speed or constant speed. But uniform velocity. If a body moves equal displacements in equal time, no matter how small the time may be, then the velocity is said to be uniform velocity or constant velocity. Acceleration, when we talk about acceleration, we're talking about the rate of change of velocity with respect to time. So, we've already seen that speed is a scalar quantity, Velocity is a vector quantity. What I mean by scalar? Scalar quantities are quantities that have only magnitude with our direction, while vector quantities are quantities that have both magnitude as well as direction. So, acceleration being the ratio of velocity with uh, respect to time, and velocity being a scalar quantity, then of course acceleration is a scalar as a vector quantity. So. Retardation is a negative acceleration. If a body accelerates, that is, if that's at all, if at all that's increasing speed, we said the body accelerates. But whenever we're experiencing reduction in speed, then we now say the body retard. But the time is one of the major quantities when we are defining motion. Time determines the interval between one event and another event. Time is a scalar quantity, and the base unit of time is second. So these are some of the important parameters that we need to know every single time we are defining um, motion. So there are um, symbols from this parametric data that we need to use to drive the essential equations of motions.
1, half time, use small letter T, 2, we have speed, let's say distance, small letter S <clears throat> for distance, 3, have velocity, V or U, then we have 3, acceleration. small letter A. Okay, let's start with from acceleration, the first equation of motion. First equation of motion. Note that acceleration, this short form of writing acceleration A, is defined as change in velocity with respect to time. What do you mean by change in velocity? Supposing the body starts with initial velocity, u. After some time, I change another velocity v. In that case, the change in velocity will be equal to, look at the symbol of change in velocity with respect to time. That's the time taken. The change in velocity simply means the final velocity minus the initial velocity over the time. Then so therefore, a will be equal to v minus u over t. In this case, a stands for the acceleration attained, v is the final velocity, u is the initial velocity, and t is the time taken for the change to occur from the initial to the final. So if you want to make the final velocity the solid formula, from here we can easily say it, v minus u equals to a t. Making v the subject, then v will be equals to u plus a t. So this is the first equation of motion. In the first equation of motion, find out that the final velocity equals to the initial velocity plus the product of acceleration and time. Then the second equation of motion. So before the second equation of motion, we need to talk about what we call the average speed. The average speed. The average speed, which is something as V bar, is given by the, um, the final velocity plus the initial velocity over 2. That is average, since we have two velocities, the initial and the final, then the average will be the summation of the, or the algebraic sums of the velocity divided by two. So, but speed, that is from the beginning we use S, speed S equals to distance, speed equals to distance, let's say V equals to distance, that is S, divided by time, that is T. So using this relation, from the first equation of motion, from the first, from equation one, here we've already given that speed equals to distance over time. So this simple defines that equating from equation one, we get to know that um, V equals to U plus 80. That is the first equation of motion. And at the same time, speed equals to distance over time, which is the average speed. So substituting the value of average speed there, equation one, V equals to U plus 80, and at the same time, we've seen that um, the V average, V average equals to U plus V plus U over two, but we have the value of V. V equals to U plus, U plus 80 plus U over two. All right, then simplifying this. At the same time, from V average again here, we have since V average equals to S over T, so this simple means that S equals to V average, V average multiplied by T. So in this case, to equate this very well, so we have S equals to V average multiplied by T, then S would then be equals to the V average which is this, 
is u plus a t plus u over 2 multiplied by t. Then s equals to, if you expand this, we have 2u plus a t times t all divided by 2. Why expanding? We have this will be equals to, if you look at this very well, the factor of 2, then we have u plus half a t multiplied by t. At the end of the day, the total distance covered will be equals to u t then plus half a t times t, we have half a t squared. So this defines the expression for total distance covered when the body moves from one point to another point. So um, we have the equation one. The equation one is v. Um, the equation one is v equals to u plus a t. Equation two is s equals to u t plus half a t squared. In this case, v is the final velocity, u is the initial velocity, a is the acceleration, t is the time. Why in this case? S stands for the total distance covered. U stands for the initial velocity, t time taken, a acceleration. So now let's go to the third equation of motion. In third equation of motion. We need to equate 1 and 2. All right. So let's take a break before we go to um, equation 2, from which we can be able to continue from where we start. Welcome back, everyone. Earlier before the break, we were able to drive um, the two important equations of motion. The first one is v equals to u plus 80. The second is s equals to ut plus half 80 squared. In both cases, v is the final velocity. S stands for total distance covered. Equation 3. From 1. Look at the equation 1. Equation 1 says v equals to u plus 80. If you decide to square both sides, square both sides, that is v squared equals to u plus 80 all squared. Squaring both sides, the left side is squared, likewise the right side. So expanding the right side, we have v squared equals to the simplest way to expand. Look at u. Since the coefficient is unity, you assign the square to u. Use the square to multiply all the terms within the bracket. 2 times u, 2u times 80. This positive sign, right, plus 2u, 80. At the end of the day, you assign square to the last terms here. Plus a squared t squared. All right. So let's look at um, common factor here. If you can be able to factorize, still have um, v squared equals to, come on factor, have, first of all, have u squared, something common here, we have a, we have t, 2, though 2 is not common here, so when you say um, plus, when you say 2, 2 into, we have 2u into, this or let's say 2u. v squared equals to u squared plus 2a. Then 2 cancel 2a cancel a. You have below to ut plus. There's no 2 here. We don't take reciprocal. Then a cancel a. We have a t squared. All right. So now we have v squared equals to u squared plus 2a. But from equation 2, we have s equals to ut plus half a t squared, meaning that u t plus half a t squared is something as the total distance covered. So this is s. So at the end of the day, this is equation 3. So in a nutshell, 
Here we have v squared equals to u squared plus 2as, in which v stands for the final velocity, u stands for the initial velocity, a stands for acceleration, s stands for the total distance. So um, in summary, the three equations of motion are the first one is v equals to u plus at. The second one is um, s equals to ut plus half at squared. Then the third is v squared equals to u squared plus 2as. So with this, we can be able to solve problems that has to do with motion. Example. Very interesting question. <clears throat> so solution comes here. First of all, always try to read through the question and bring out the key points. Very, very important. A body moving with an initial velocity of this. Look at initial velocity of 30 meter per second. In this case, you write initial velocity always u equals to 30 meter per second. <clears throat> Accelerate uniformly at the rate of 10 meter per second. We have a equals to 10 meter per second squared. Since it's acceleration, and remember we say uniform acceleration is when a body change, when the velocity of a body change at equal time, no matter how small the time may be. So in this case, it attains a velocity of 50 meter per second. That's another velocity, that's the final 50 meter per second. So the question says, what is the distance covered during this period? Distance is S, which is unknown. So from the parametric, or from the three equations of motion, so we search and confirm where we have exactly the three, or uh, these four parameters, U. In this case, there is no time. So look, take a look at this. In the first equation, there is time. In the second, we have time. While in the fourth one, there is no time. So in this case, supposing we are, uh, say, using V squared, equals to u squared plus 2s. So this implies that v squared, that is um, 550 squared, equals to u squared, that is the initial velocity, 30 squared, then plus 2 times, acceleration is given as 10 times the distance is not known. So, the best way to handle this question is, let's use um, difference of two squares. In this case, we have 50 my squared minus 30 squared equals to 2 times 10. 2 times 10 is 20, then 20s. 20 I don't know if there, since we have had the value of s, s then will be equals to, using difference of two squared, this will be equals to 50 plus 30 into 50, 50 minus 30, all divided by 20. So we have the distance cover will be equal to 50 plus 30, that is 80, times 50 minus 30, that is 20, all divided by 20. So at the end of the day, can you say 20 cancel out 20, leaving behind 80? So we have 80 meters. The SI unit of distance is meters. All right, so if you look at this question very well, as I have told you earlier before now, whenever you're given a question in sciences, don't rush the question. Bring out the keywords, as we know, a body. When we say a body, we are simply referring to any particle. It could be living or non-living in science, moving with an initial velocity. Just this will tell you that this is among one of the parametric values used in equations. Accelerates, look at this, accelerates uniformly at the rate of, the acceleration here is given as 10 meter per second squared until it attains a velocity. Initially, we have initial velocity here, Attaining under velocity is seen as an acceleration. So in that case, the velocity it attains 
is the second velocity, which is the final velocity, and the final velocity is given as 50 meters a second. So now the question is, what is the distance? Look at this. This is another parameter. What is the distance covered during this period? So we have, first of all, u is given as 30 from the question. A is given as 10 meter per second square. Final velocity, v is given as 50 meter per second. Then the distance covered is unknown. So the next thing expected of you is, since you all know the three various equations of motion, then you now search which of the equations has the parameters given in such a way that there is no any parameter that is unknown, apart from the parameter given in the question. So that is why we identify the first one. Time is not given in the question, so the first one cannot go. The second one, despite the fact that we have S, but time is not given. Why the second time is given? All right. Um, thank you for watching.